going with the epic music for this final game here. Option 12, nine lives. Who is going to win? What adjustments will be made? Jeff, you are here with me. What are your thoughts? Man, uh, nine lives, man, they look good. Last game, that, that, was, that was really well executed. Right from the start, that first bot lane gank. Um, Slack seemed like he was everywhere in the early game, helping secure advantages for basically all of his laners. Uh, Rolexis didn't really need much help, but he secured his own advantage up in the top lane, and, and they just were rode that wave the whole way. It seemed like option 12, they got a couple decent fights, but you know that gold lead never really got below 4k or so, and, and 9 lives just played really well, played it out really well. Yeah, I'd almost think that the gold lead indicator was broken during that game <laughs> because you constantly saw during the mid game option 12 was coming back man they were getting picks they were getting fights big swings pointy ball was doing great and that gold lead never dropped yeah and, i mean sorry go ahead no i was just gonna say and so it's one of those things where it's like okay so where are the other advantage okay where are the other advantages yeah i mean i think it was the uh the, the biggest thing was just, you know, the Ezreal was so far ahead. And like you said, Pointing Ball did a pretty good job to, uh, you know, pick up some scraps, pick up some gold for himself. But what you saw there was just the difference in when those uh, champions come online. Um, because the Ezreal was dishing out insane amounts of damage from about 16 minutes on when he completed those two items. Whereas uh, the Caitlyn never really got to, uh, to her power point. Yeah. And we've been seeing that from from Caitlyn a little bit today. Just hasn't quite been able to reach that final arch, that that, mm -hmm. that final pinnacle. Gets about eighty percent up the mountain. Yep. And, and then then the game ends. The mountain falls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's another reason that I was a little bit surprised that uh, that they opted for the Caitlyn first pick over the Ash because they've been so successful with the Ash already this split and uh now they're just uh excuse me sorry someone's talking in chat um but also it adds more to the team it brings um you know utility that Caitlyn does not so even if you are behind you can fire off those arrows the hawk shot gives critical vision Speaking so of, I was a little surprised. Speaking of chat, if you can access chat, could you tell them we're ready? Because I can't for some reason. Got it. Um. So yeah, you know, I mean, I'm interested to see if they somehow manage to get their hands on Ash. We haven't seen Ash at all today yet. Um. If they go with a more traditional jungle pick, I saw lots of people blaming um, the Urgot for the game not going well? Yeah, the Urgot wasn't very effective uh, in that game. There were a lot of times where Prowler just sort of got deleted right at the start because he was frontlining, but he was extremely squishy. I'm hoping that my the chat being glitched isn't going to affect the game actually starting. I was noticing some weird stuff, just as an aside. Okay, I was noticing some weird stuff with the fonts earlier, too. So I think... Uh, the client is crashing on us again. In some yeah, situation. the client's had a, a few little issues uh, this week, for sure. Well, if it can last another 50 minutes, <laughs> that's all we need. But, I mean, we did. that's the other thing, is that Prowler likes those assassin champs, right? Mm -hmm. you, you don't really have that with her gut. Where's, uh, where's Lee Sin? Lee Sin. <laughs> we, we haven't I've seen been, Lee Sin. I've been begging somebody to play him all split. All right, so we have the, the gangplank banned right away. We have the respect for the gangplank, and I mean, you know, like I said, he's a he's a good, consistent, and rather annoying person to lane against. So I don't see a reason not to ban him. Maybe throws Relexus off his game. The Relexus has quite a few uh, options to choose from. Let's see what the the next banning choice is. Could take the Ezreal away. Yeah, I know that Prowler in particular does not like playing against Ezreal, um, so I'm not surprised that they decided to take that off the table, uh, given how incredibly strong it was in that last game. 
Nine lives, yeah, I'm not surprised that they're just sticking with the exact same bands as they did in game one. That is one of the reasons I kind of like uh, when we move into uh, so best of threes, best of uh, fives, mm -hmm. is you really see the band lists evolve. Yeah. And I, I really enjoy Very the cool. psychology of that. But you gotta, you get a, uh, a best of two, and typically the, the team who wins just, you know, sticks with what they know. Mm hmm. Like, for example, we got the Volley Bear again, which Slack did very well in. I'd like to see a couple more actual ults from him as opposed to escapes, but it worked. They did leave the Nocturne up, which is uh, a champion that Prowler can be very potent on. See if they decide to. Oh, the Lux is also. was banned earlier today. I think that was during the uh, Blitz game. So now we'll see Lux in action. I would expect that to be a support Lux. And I'm wondering if option 12, I wouldn't be surprised to see a uh, Zillion coming out from Gregosaurus in this game. Well, they need a heck of a lot of durability for their last two picks then to make up for this assassin and squishy backline they'd be putting together. Now it's Nine Lives taking the Caitlyn early on. Um, so. I would be really surprised if option 12 don't opt into the Ash. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably grab Ash right here as opposed to going with the Zillion, because if you don't, Ash is getting banned for sure. Probably, yeah. And I doubt that a Zillion would get banned. And I don't even know for sure if, if they would play it. I just know that it synergizes pretty well with Nocturne. You put that ult on him and he can dive in and not even die. Interesting to see the Thresh pick. Thresh hasn't been that common in the LCUS, the split. All the love for the uh, the Morganas. They'll secure the Maokai for Sigtau Eternal, one of his most comfortable champions. Oh yeah. And again, I would be pretty disappointed in option 12 if they didn't save their last pick for a uh, mid lane counter. There's the Ash Ban, not surprised. I don't really know how I feel about them grabbing the Thresh there. Um, maybe it's because they don't want to show their hand for their last two picks. Mm -hmm. But if you don't pick the Thresh, one of the picks that um, 12 bans is definitely going to be Yumi. Which would be a waste. Mm, that's and a good point. It, since you're planning on going Thresh anyway, no one's going to ban Thresh. At least, not yet. I like what option 12 is doing here, targeting Rolexis with these last few bans. Basically every band except for, for <laughs> Senna, alright. So Senna Lux bot lane? Most Poss likely. Possibly. And now I'm wondering if it will be a zillion just because that's a pretty low damage comp, uh, unless Nocturne gets, you know, crazy fed. Mordekaiser or Akali. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, Lux can deal a lot of damage too. Big laser. Indeed. Yeah, more than your average support, that's for sure. And nine lives, they're, you know, I I hope to see a you know pretty heavy damage mid laner here because otherwise they might fall into that same trap with you know your, all your eggs being in the late game Caitlyn basket. Swain, okay. Swain can dish out the pain. I rhymed. And now we'll see the mid lane choice for Gregorsaurus. This is interesting actually with Nine Lives. I I think they are able to uh, flex this Mordekaiser and Swain. So option 12 might not know for sure which one is going where. There is the Zillion pickup for option 12. Great period of Odin predicting that uh, Lizabeth will not be building the Lux uh, support, but it's pure damage. So. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would agree with that prediction. Somewhat of a squishy team, though, still. Yeah, with absolutely. The, only the Maokai being durable. I mean, obviously Lux has her shields, but and Zillion has his ult. Yeah, you've got the Zillion ult, the the shields from Lux, the heals from Senna. So, you yeah, know, it's, they... It's spell-based They have durability. tools. Yeah, they have tools, but uh, if they get jumped on and just bursted down, you know, Zillion can save one person, but that might not be enough. Mm-hmm. 
Who would he say? Probably the Nocturne of the Lux. I don't know how... Oh. I, I haven't really seen Senna get so super fed that she's intimidating. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously she's been nerfed quite a lot, but... Yeah, I think I think you would probably ult the Senna, though, still. Um, just because she will, or at least should, overall be uh, more of a presence, consistent presence in teamfights than the Nocturne or the Lux, who kind of just have their ults and then hovel around. We have Burn the Heretic predicting that 12 lost the draft. Interesting. Um, hmm. I mean, I personally it's... do feel more comfortable looking at 9 lives as draft. Yeah. I mean, 9 lives is much more standard. You've got, you know, 2.5 tanks, traditional support, hyper carry, AD carry. Um, option 12 is much more innovative, much more difficult to to execute with tools like the Zillion Alt and, and the Dawning Shadow from Senna, but there's there is potential for this draft. Um because I think we saw Blitzkrieg run something similar to this back in week one. And I hope option twelve does what I didn't see Blitzkrieg do at all in that game, which is you pop a bomb onto Nocturne, have him dive in, and then you can do the Dawning Shadow from Senna, the laser from Lux all over the top. It's an insane amount of damage from about 3,000 units away. Well, you also um, have communication. <laughs> um, as Great Beard of Odin says, I was about to mention, uh, Nocturne early game is going to be what this team comp lives and dies on. Mm. Um, Nocturne hits six. I wanted to see him, if there's any sort of opening, I want to see him drill onto Caitlyn Hard. I think just any sort of disruption will put the Caitlyn in a position where the Lux will be able to trap and zap. Mm -hmm. And that will give them the momentum they need. If Icy Flip is on the ball, it's possible that won't work because obviously Flays and Lanterns can help mm -hmm. save a Caitlyn in that situation. Um, obviously, jumping on a Swain could be possible too. Swain does have a bit of that um, health boost that he can get. Um, yeah, he has no mobility, right. but he becomes naturally durable with his ultimate. Um, it will be tricky to take down this Caitlyn, though, just because, you know, General Wally is going to be, I think he's pretty solid at dodging skill shots, so it's going to be tough to lock him down, and then I don't think a Nocturne can really burst him by himself between Thresh flaying him, Caitlyn netting away, and the Lantern Shield, you know, Nocturne only gets one spell shield, so he can only spell shield the net, or the hook, or the flay. It's worth pointing out, a lot of the bands today have been top lane focused. Like yeah. In the first set of games, obviously, we got Stelio, and so you had to put a lot of bands up there, and a couple of bands over on Gotta Get Lucky, and Relexus, and a couple of bands also on uh, J-Dog, quite a bit also. So, yeah, yeah, well, we, when we talked to Gotta Get Lucky after that series, he did bring up that just the average top winner in the league this year, or excuse me, this split, is just very, very good. Um, you know, all, except all but two, I believe. They're they're all, you know, gold or higher. I think we have at least one diamond, a couple plats. Like, it's, it's just a lot of very, very skilled players up in that top lane this split. Now, I gotta give option 12 this because bad Swain skin. <laughs> I know no one likes Totemic Maokai, but I bilge water Swain is a no. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, Totemic Maokai and Bilgewater Swain kind of cancel each other out for me, and I think I liked the uh, other four skins of Nine Lives better. So I'm going to go Nine Lives on this one. I mean, Bilgewater Swain doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> Well, he is, I believe in the lore, he is from that region. Or no, he's from, no, he's from he's somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There's actually a, uh, a voice line in Rune Terra where he, if, I think if you play against, if you play him against Misfortune, he tells her that Bilgewater is going to fall to Noxus. And mm. Misfortune is not a fan of that. <laughs> I mean, obviously he has parrots as his followers, which are kind of, it's kind of cute. But. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I wish the parrots talked. That's a little too much detail, I think. 
<laughs> it would also probably get very annoying after about a minute after the novelty wears off. I'm excited to see this Senna skin. This is one I just got from my uh, my Twitch Prime box. But I've never really yeah, seen anyone I, use it. Yeah, same. But I really enjoyed how she's uh, riding a horse on the way out of the Nexus. I think all of them do that. Well, fine. <laughs> well, I, I just know because you see High Noon uh, Ash all the time. Mm -hmm. and she does I'm wondering if, if High Noon Twisted Fate does that, because that's an older skin. I, I would assume not, since he wasn't in the new batch. Yeah, unless they would have reworked it somehow, but it seems like a lot of work. God, that gun is just so obnoxiously big. <laughs> I like the hat, yep. though. That hat knows Between the horse on. and how ridiculous that gun is, I actually forgot who Pointy Ball was playing for a moment. General Wally shooting out of that bush, which is generally a good idea. It gets you those headshot stacks faster. Nice little uh, poke shot right down the lane right away. Ooh, her little spirits are bullets. That's cute. <laughs> Truffle and Gregosaurus have a pretty even trade in the mid lane, both of them landing their respective first abilities. It's kind of funny, Truffle versus, or Swain versus Zillion is interesting because, you know, Zillion has his little bombs, right? And Swain really likes pulling you into him, which just makes it easier to land bombs on you. It's true. Not sure they how do get the level two that. first. Yeah, Icy Flip, I like that he's threatening right away. Oh, and there is the hook. Play to come out, and Pointy Ball is going to have to burn the heal. Might die anyway, good exhaust. Oh, Ooh. the last headshot. Almost got him, but had that potion being chugged. Did have to flash at the end, as you said. And Icy Flip there running the uh, the exhaust instead of the ignite here, so might have been lacking just a little bit of damage from that. Yeah, they got a lot of damage off the exhaust, though. I think that was workable. Ooh, that cooldown on those bombs is real short. Well, it's the uh, it's the W of Zillion allows him to just throw two in a row sure. once every ten seconds or so. There's a nice pull from Trufflesaurus. He's starting to win these trades a little bit, although just as I say that, Gregosaurus does land the double bomb. Getting low on mana, though, which could be an issue. There's a lot of pulls on this team. Because well, I was I was watching Mordecai, who just did a pull, as you said, the Truffle mm -hmm. did the pull. So, I mean, there's, yeah. a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of yanks. We got the hook from Thresh. A lot of stuff going oh, on boy. here. Slackosaurus walking right up to Prowler and has to flash. Prowler will flash in return, and Icy Flip, he could lantern. Yeah, and they do get the CC down onto Prowler. Meanwhile, General Wally is fending off Pointy Ball, and Prowler, I think, is going to drop first blood to General Wally, and Slackosaurus Rex able to survive the last bomb. Yeah, that is not what you want to see if you are a uh, Option 12 fan at all. You need that Nocturne alive. Obviously, the downtime is not massive, but you need this Nocturne alive and kicking. Yeah, I think that in that situation, Prowler probably should have just been satisfied with getting the flash and and allowed Slackosaurus to walk away. There's actually a very in-depth discussion going on in the uh, chat right now about ban strategies, which is which is very interesting. Brought on by the conversation about all the top laners um, being mm. banned out. Um, the... Uh, the strategy that Burn the Heretic is suggesting is that you should uh, focus down Icy Flip when you're banning out against uh, 9 lives. Make him play a support he's not comfortable with. Good oh, gank here up in the top he lane. Might get, yeah, he actually gets a kill in the 1v2. He might get a both, actually. Yeah, this is dangerous. Nope, not quite. This barely didn't have the damage, but that's still certainly worth it for the Mordekaiser to absorb that gank and still get a kill in return. Nine lives, setting up a freeze in the spot lane, it looks like. Or, nope, just as I say that, they play the wave, so they want to get this to tower and then uh, potentially go help Slackosaurus on the Drake, but Gregosaurus is first to the roam from mid lane. Oh man, they're very weak going for this dragon here. This could be very bad. Yeah, this is quite dangerous. Slackosaurus goes the wrong way, walks away from the lantern. Prowler's nowhere nearby, though, so nine lives, they might just be able to continue this without no. the jungler? No. 
Sig Tower Eternal teleports in. I think option 12 is going to get it now. Nine Lives is making some really questionable decisions in this game, too. Now, they don't have a smite here, and there is vision, so General Wally can try to shoot in with a Pilt Over Peacemaker and take this Drake. Very close. Fired a little early. Oh my goodness, Icy Flip. Yep, speaking of questionable decisions. The flare, the, the flay was very close. I don't know if first dragon is worth doing that though. Agreed. Okay. Meanwhile, the Relic has gotten a lot of free time up in this top lane. 24 CS advantage, he'll probably get a plate here, maybe two. Check out the gold differential here, 700 or so. Uh, we have questions about um, what uh, league this is. We're, we're trying to have all kind of lower level players be able to have a fun team experience. Uh, it's not random necessarily, uh, Bixis. We have um, players sign up and then we try to match them all together to sort of a balanced level of skills um, in, a, in a league style format. Yeah, players all the way from bronze up to diamond, so just trying to make sure that we balance out the uh, the skill levels properly. And I mean, now that we're into week three, it seems to be that way. We've had 1-1-1 one, one, one all the way through so far. Yeah, that's true. And even the uh, the top dog, so to speak, was 1-1 one, one today. Gregosaurus is starting to carve out a little bit of an advantage on farm in this mid lane. Might have a bit of a gank here, Slackosaurus. Nope. Good job by Greg squeezing out along the edge there. Oh, General Wally, he did get caught by one of those skill shots that I was talking about, and it means that the Thresh will die for his sins. Alright, so Prowler doing what we said. Hit six, go bot. Rolexus has ulted Sigtow Eternal up in the top lane. The Malkai does have his ultimate, so he could root him up and potentially walk away. There it is. Oh, Relaxus just walks right through it, though, and gets the solo kill onto the Maokai. General Wally's got to be a little bit careful here with how far he steps up. And actually, Pointy Ball used the heal there, uh, so maybe afraid of that ace in the hole coming out at the end, but General Wally isn't quite six yet. We missed the, um... We missed the, uh, fight in the top lane. We are watching the fight in the bot where, uh, Volley Bear almost got caught out there. Ah, okay. Well, it wasn't that interesting. It was Mordekaiser ulting someone and then just running and hitting them with his mace until well, they die. You know, it's, <laughs> that's, that's the, the fun thing to watch about Mordekaiser, so hopefully we'll get another <laughs> one of that. So Rolexus now, he's got two plates, it looks like, um, and huge CS lead, two kills. This is going to start to be a problem for option 12 because, you know, Mordekaiser, if he's the strongest champion in the game, then it means that he can just bait every fight a 4v5 essentially yeah Bixis um, if you want to uh, look into things like subbing and learning more um, we've got our website GMA Gaming uh, you can join up on uh, Facebook uh, we have a subreddit we've got all of our previous splits are on YouTube if you want to check those out um, and you know um, even if you're not able to get in on this split feel free to jump in on the next one Always looking for more players. We used to have uh, the one or two splits ago, we actually had more teams than we have now. So. Oh, that's a good hook on two pointy ball. They actually didn't quite line the uh, trap combo up. They played him off of it, but still a decent chunk of free damage. Ooh, nice little snare there. Big alt doesn't deal that much damage though. Yeah, I'm not sure if the Dawning Shadow was worth using there. It's a good measure of where Senna's at damage-wise, though. So we can kind of hold that in mind and see what happens later. Uh, we do have Slack. In a little bit of trouble here, but uh, Truffle comes up to help out his dinosaur friend. There's a pull from the Swain onto Sigtau Eternal, who is pretty far behind the curve right now. And Gregosaurus was in base, so Nine Lies is able to pick up that Rift Herald. Yeah, Rolex is doing very well. We've got uh, almost a 1700 gold lead for him. Big laser on Icy Flip. He's going to have to head back almost immediately here. Wally oh boy, almost getting Wally. pointy fall. Good block. Yep. Queen Wizard takes the shot. 
And Rift Herald summoned up top, so they are going to get this whole turret. Tower Eternal has wandered all the way down to the bot side river. Just to head back. Dragon will be up soon. We'll see if uh, Prowler decides to go in for it immediately. Doesn't have any real support. He can solo it, and they they might be aware that General Wally and Icy Flip have just recalled. So this should be free for option 12. They also know that both Slack and Rolexis are up in the top lane. But that Rift Herald getting a big chunk out of the second turret now, and Six Tower Eternal's got to be careful here. They could absolutely dive in. I actually think they're just going to get this turret too. Second Dragon, four option 12, so they have that advantage at least. 2k gold lead. And it will be a Cloud Soul coming up. So, big offensive push up in this top lane. Relexus and uh, Slackosaurus both leading that spear. Trufflesaurus and Gregosaurus duking it out. There's the bombs. Good stun. Trufflesaurus got the ultimate off just in time, so that will keep him away from immediate danger. But here comes Prowler, and oh, Trufflesaurus just stepped too far forward. Ultimate is available for Gregosaurus if he wants. Puts it on him just in case, but Prowler didn't even need it. Does Swain turn into a parrot when he does that? <laughs> I wasn't watching. It kind of looked like he does. I like the um, I like the Swain skins that change him into you know more of a demonic creature. Yeah. His default Swain, he's just you know a big scary Lucius Malfoy. Uh, meanwhile, Gregosaurus, he's stuck around the mid lane too long, just trying to get that wave to turret, but. Oh, now here comes a teleport to the bot lane, though, and Nine Lives could be in trouble. Here's Sig Tower Eternal. He will lock up both of them, and General Wally gets annihilated by that laser. One more attack. There's the Dawning Shadow. It's back up already. That's a much shorter cooldown I would have expected, but here's Rolexis now on the backside, and this is a very scary Mordekaiser. Pointy Ball, I think he will drop. Here comes Slackosaurus, so... Oh, no! Slackosaurus actually decides to go for the Lux. Now he jumps onto Pointy Ball. He flashes after him and should get him. Rolexis has somehow stayed alive through all of this assault. Gregosaurus shows up, and now Prowler's here as well. Everybody just taking turns joining these fights. Icy Flip could be in trouble. Trufflesaurus joins the party. Everybody showing up in a really strange extended team fight. Gregosaurus could be the last to fall as the death sentence will be true to its name. Oh, and that last bomb almost picking up two kills. Super Smash Bros. Eat your heart out. Everybody was at that fight. My god. Gosh, the staggered arrivals there was just just very strange, but give credit to uh, to everybody for showing up because a lot of the time it's tricky, you know, in those situations to know, like, is it worth it for me to roam? Will the fight be over by the time I get there? Is it better if I just push the lane? Ponyball and General Wally duking it out. Oh, and another laser coming out from Lizbear, but doesn't land that one. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, I'm not sure. Obviously, the 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 closer, the more teammates arrive at the same time, the better it is, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who the staggered arrival benefited more. Um, I think it helped Nine Lives out more because that meant that um, Relaxus could take a breath and focus on one target at a time. Yeah, and. I mean, Relexus being so strong was a key factor in that fight because he was able to just absorb the damage from two or three members of option 12. Mm -hmm. And once again, we have a very dominating top lane performance with uh, the mid and top lanes both being half of what uh, Relexus is. Blackstars could be in trouble here, but no, they won't actually go for too big of a pick. Oh, what is Senna's souls at? 33. Ooh, nice little hook there. Doesn't pull at all, though. Yeah, nine wise, they have to be respectful right now because General Wally is pretty low. It only takes, you know, one ability landing one of those snares, and he would probably drop. Well, the laser is available. So, I mean, even that's. If it seems like Wally's tunnel visioning at all, they can laser. It's a good sidestep by Pointy Ball on that hook. Prowler Relax is kind of fighting up in the jungle. Does have health though, so I don't know if Relaxis will stay around. Not that it matters with Mordekaiser's ult. And they do go in as Ponyball gets the kill onto General Wally, so one of those snares must have landed, and oh, they oh. get the shutdown onto Relaxis. That's just. That could be a critical point in the game if option 12 is to come back, because that's a big shutdown. Just Not a little the person bit too much hubris. 
Not the person you want the gold on, though. I mean, it's a it's a huge step up for the Zillion, but I think you wanted that on the on Prowler instead. Probably, but it'll be it'll be fine on Gregosaurus Rex. Once Zillion gets to uh, to two items, it not only adds to his damage, obviously, but his utility. I believe Gregosaurus will go for that GLP next, and that slow just basically guarantees the double bomb stun. Ooh, good pull in there on the Swain. I like that. I don't know if he's going to get anything done with it. Swain with 13 bird stacks. Does have ult available. Everyone congregating around this Drake. This could be a big one, because option 12, if they can get to soul point at 16 minutes, that really would help curb the gold disadvantage that they are currently at. Icy Flip gets stunned, and this Thresh may just get destroyed. Misses the hook, but the laser doesn't land. Slack is fighting in the pit as General Wally takes down Pointy Ball. This is a fight on multiple fronts. The Smite fight goes over to Prowler, and that's big. But now what does Option 12 get out of the fight? Zillion against Caitlyn is tough because, yeah, you just put those traps down, and as soon as you're revived, you're dead again. So another dragon fight that um, Nine Lives loses but manages to clean up. Yeah, that was big that Prowler got that smite, otherwise that would have been a catastrophic series of events for Nine Lives, or, or excuse me, for Option 12, whereas now it is only subpar. Great point by Greatbeard of Odin in chat, something I was about to mention. The durability of Slack and Relaxus is just going to keep getting harder to deal with. They don't have great options to melt down these tanks. Yeah, we talked about this, you know, when we were thinking they might pick the Zillion, the, the problem with it is that it is relatively low damage. Um, Senna just doesn't cut through tanks the way that other AD carries do. And Zillion and Lux, you know, they, they do burst damage, but they don't really do consistent damage. And we, we have seen Senna suffer that in the past. Um, where she has been uh, a reasonable pick, but not one that works well against late game tanks. And what do we have in this game? The late game power. Truffle Source might be in trouble here. That's a good stopwatch. Your favorite item. Everyone's favorite item. Oh, here come all the ults, though. He sidesteps one of them, at least, and that was critical. Stopwatch is OP. Call your congressman. <laughs> Psychosaur is coming down, but that turret will be gone before he gets there. Hey, you know who would have been a good damage-dealing uh, spellcaster for this game? Karthus. <laughs> Prowler uses the ult, I think. Oh, that's on a general Wally in the mid lane, actually. Good Wally trap, able to though. walk away. Yeah. That's Good job escaping. Trap. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, everyone from option 12 has gotten out as well. So a lot of action just got uh, no result for now. There's a snare on to Slackosaurus, though. They don't quite get the stun. Sigtow Eternal has come down. Oh, Ooh. Icy Blip misses the blind hook, and he might die for that now. There's the box. He will get snared up. Gregosaurus, one more bomb is all that's needed. As General Wally steps right up into his face, actually. That's very brave. Slackosaurus trying to take down Pointy Ball. On the other side, Trufflesaurus destroys Queen Lizbear. And Rolexus is in the back, just approaching with no deterrence. Gregosaurus is going to get 2v1. He does actually kill General Wally in exchange, but the rest of the fight has gone all the way of nine lives. Missed what health Pointy Ball was at. That was pretty low, though. Oh, it was about 10, <laughs> if that. Oh, Relaxus is going for blood, man. He wants it. Yeah, gotta just walk all the way. Ooh, and they brought the uh, brought the Herald in for the fun, too. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good call to pop that in that situation. Don't think they'll be able to finish this second turn. Actually, they will. Relaxus has enough damage. So the gold lead all of a sudden ballooning up to near 6,000. But option 12, they have those three drakes. Yeah, and 6,000 is all Relaxus. Man, the replay is really stuttering for me right now. Too much excitement for the replay. <laughs> Everyone's going back. I'm honestly not a huge fan of um, Slack on Volibear, but I mean he's been being a, a real pal for Relexus in this game. He's been getting some good mileage in. Yeah, it seems like he's not, you know, really finding the huge ultimates or anything, but he's just 
soaking up so much damage. He's zoning the back line. He's threatening Pointy Ball and Wiz Bear in ways that don't allow them to play the way that they probably want to. Option 12, doing a lot of diligent vision control around this dragon. Dragon yeah, will be coming, nice, but... coming soon here. What's the soul count? 43? Oh, there's a hook onto Pointy Ball. Oh, and the pull does land. Can they nuke him down? He does go down. They do have the Zillion ult, though. And here is Prowler against Relexus in the Death Realm. And the Shadow Realm will be the last resting place of Nocturne. Laser comes out, but it's not enough damage. Relexus is too tanky. A triple for this Mordekaiser. Yeah, they have no answer to Mordekaiser. That's just the long and the short of it. I should have zoomed in on that Swain to see if he actually was a parent. <laughs> I forgot again as well. He turns bright red, so it's kind of hard to really make out the, uh, the texture or mm. detail of the skin. Ooh, that hook missed by pixels from Icy Flip. But I mean, what we've been saying, or experiencing, I should say, during all of the games today, is every team has had an ADC who you go, okay, he gets three or four more kills on him, they'll be good, right? <laughs> you don't have this feeling with basically anyone on option 12. Maybe Nocturne, but Nocturne is not going to chew through both Slack and Relexus, ever. Yeah, that's a good point. Icy Flip will probably get killed here, though. Oh, no, he is able to walk it out. I've seen people get hit by lasers like that. Come on, okay. <laughs> All right, so this turret is probably going to die with, uh, well, we'll see how quickly Relexus can get here. Here goes not Prowler, cool. he's going in onto Trufflesaurus, who has very little mana, so I'm not sure yeah. he'll be able to survive this. No ultimate, yep. Not a Good bad call. Prowler. I can get behind that. A couple more plays like that. Gregosaurus just barely missed the uh, second bomb there. Dawning Shadow is available if Pointy Ball wanted to go for a snipe on this. Hey, could have gone Karthus, could have killed Wally. <laughs> Think about it. Now Relax right. is walking up to Prowler, and Prowler's got to be a little careful here because the Death Realm is available. Pull doesn't land. Relax is really get in range what for the What are you ult doing, Prowler? Prowler yeah, making poor uh, life choices. He flashes away, but he's still stuck in that yeah. Death Realm with Relax. Dodges the Q, dodges everything. Dawning Shadow, oh no. Dawning Shadow didn't give Prowler, or it did give him the shield, I believe, but it wasn't enough. Prowler decided to have one more horrible thing happen in 2020 and decided to uh, get himself killed there. Yeah, I think he could have he could have been out, but he walked back and spell shielded. I'm not sure if he was just trying to uh, do sort of a swag spell shield on the ultimate because you know that'd be kind of cool, but mm -hmm. definitely not worth the risk. Yeah, I mean that's basically what I was expecting. Also, I was thinking that's the only reason you'd be spell shielding right there. Mm -hmm. So you're expecting the ult to come in and you're like, huh, huh, look at that, Yuki. Yeah, exactly, but even if it had been successful, it's really not a, a, a big play. Right. You know, you, you make him waste the cooldown, but you right. don't what, get anything for it. The cooldown's only 75 seconds. I mean, it's not anything that impressive. Yeah, and I like what Nine Lives is doing here. They know that they're very far ahead. Rolexus, though, extremely low, uses the stopwatch, and he will flash out of the pit. Baron is down to about 1.5k. Prowler does have Paranoia. He jumps in the bit. Yes! He steals it in the ultimate. He got it. But now what happens with the fight? Rolexus is already extremely low. Trouble Saurus drops. In goes Slackosaurus. He still can't really catch onto anybody. Ace in the hole comes out onto Pointy Ball. Oh, big hook from Icy Flip. The ultimate is on Pointy Ball. Good stun from Gregosaurus. Pointy Ball should drop here. And the ultimate had just barely timed out. So it's four kills for nine lives. But a critical steal by Prowler. And everyone's chasing Zillion here, which is distracting from winning the game. We do have pings telling the team to focus on the objectives, and they are doing so. Zillion does manage to get back. Can he hold the line for eight seconds? Yeah, I think with Prowler being up right about now, I don't know if Nine Lives can really push this much further. If they do, Sigtow Eternal has teleport and could try to come behind him. So yeah, good discipline call there. And man... Between the uh, the third Drake, I believe it was earlier, and that Baron, 
couple of Prowler Smites have essentially kept this game from being over by now, probably. So many, um... So many steals, in fact, today. This has been the day of steals. It's incredible. Indeed. <laughs> it's one of the, the best LCOS se series, all, all, all six games, that we've had so far. I mean, maybe not that game four with uh, Andy having a million gold, but other than that... Like, I mean, even this, the option 12 is half crawling back into this. They almost yeah, they... killed Relexus there, even, despite their mm -hmm. lack of damage. Yeah, they absolutely, you know, have ways back into this game. We have, the one uh, thing is, is that we're seeing the Caitlyn get to this point now, where, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's sort of like final boss, where, okay, like, you survived long enough to withstand Relexus, but now Queen Whisper is about to get taken down, they can't protect her after this ult. Dawning Shadow does some big damage, but it's not enough. Here comes Lachosaurus. Good spell shield by Prowler keeps him from getting pulled, and he will be able to walk it out. But, as I was saying, you know, even if you get to the point where you can survive Relexus, beat him down, then all of a sudden it's like, well, now our Caitlyn's online, though. Right. Yeah, Caitlyn's getting those items that she needs. And unlike uh, the last couple of games where she's gotten online but haven't been able to do too much, she's on the, the team with the momentum this time. Zach really wants this kill. Oh, Sigtow Eternal, questionable pathing choice there. And they will catch on to Gregosaurus eventually, but... Ooh, Ooh. the horse hits the tree, and I believe Sigtow Eternal will go down for this, but what can they get in return? Laser caught onto a couple people. And here goes Prowler in onto General Wally. Can again? What a trap from General Wally, but it's not enough. The red buff burns him down, but Prowler will pay for it with his own life. Big damage comes out from the bombs of Gregosaurus, and that keeps that fight from being a disaster. One more. No, oh, I see Blub just barely survives. They do manage to kill Relaxus. So, I mean, again, they are putting out damage now. I think, yeah, I think cool, actually, yeah. arguably, they could have won that. Yeah, it was... It was a very, very close fight. Nine Lives came into it with about four members on half health, though. So, it's... Sure, might it's not, be a it's not quite as impressive as it could have been, but... Yeah, but, you know, yeah, if they all group up for those double bombs of Zillion, for the Lux AoE, the Senna AoE, it's, it's still a threat that right. they need to be respectful of. And, and like you said, you know, it, it, even though uh, most of Nine Lives was low, um, it's the fact that Nine Lives was taking fights like that while they're low. It's the player mentality question that really will come into play here. Because if they're going to misplay like that, you know, that, mm -hmm. that will give option 12 an opening. And it was so crucial that Prowler got just enough damage to drop General Wally in oh, that yeah. fight. Oh yeah, absolutely. So let's take a quick peek at the gold here. Prowler and Wally actually dead even, essentially. Um, Relax is still, of course, the top of the pyramid there. 15 kills, absolutely insane. You get more kills the entirety of option 12. Yeah, and I'm a little bit surprised um, that there isn't more armor in the build of Relexus, just given that it's, you know, Prowler who is doing so much of the damage for option 12, but then again, I, I understand it because there's more magic damage characters in general on option 12. He also may just feel like he doesn't need those sorts of things. Because, you know, he's just so tanky already. Mm -hmm. But... And it... the... Go ahead. I was just going to say, if this game manages to go for another, let's say, 10 minutes, I think we'll start seeing a little more durability being thrown on him in the armor department. Well, it's also that he's already almost full build. Right. He's about to finish his sixth item. And one thing that we haven't talked about yet is how Mordekaiser ult can essentially be used to make objective securing 100%. Because you can just take the enemy jungler into the death realm and he can't use his smite anymore. Mm -hmm. Can also um, take Lux out as well. Either Lux or Prowler, who are kind of two of the bigger threats. Mm -hmm. Or hell, Shadow Realm Gregosaurus so he can't ult save somebody. Yeah. That too, there's there's a lot of worthy targets, um, but especially with option 12 being on soul point, I think that if there's even a slight risk of uh, mm -hmm. losing that critical objective, 
you'll see him just say, now Prowler, you don't get to, to come in here. Icy Flip could be in trouble. He is just getting roasted alive by Prowler. Yeah, lots of ults dumped, but that might be enough to scare off uh, nine lives from this Baron. I mean, that is the big story right now, is that we're on soul point for option 12, and if Relaxus gets taken out here... Oh boy, that was one auto attack on a pointy ball, though, from General Wally. I mean, both sides need to be very aware of the fact that this dragon is going to be a big factor in deciding this game. I like what Prowler is doing here, just pushing the wave, but he's got to be careful. Yeah, he gets rooted up, and there's no zillion around, so he just gets destroyed. 50 seconds is a massive time right now. Pings are going everywhere. One side wants to go for the dragon. One side wants to go for the Baron. Somebody needs to make a call here on nine lives. That will probably decide oh, the game. Gotta be careful. And he does get just barely pulled back and puts the ultimate on himself. Truffle Source in trouble, but there is the Zoni's Hourglass. Gregor Source actually, he flashes over the wall. He's in the death realm, but they can't catch him. Eventually, he does go down. Slackosaurus getting chased by Pointy Ball, though. Good Lantern by Icy Flip keeps him safe. Relexus, you are oh, not no. strong enough to 1v3 here. He might get Pointy Ball, but he'll go down afterward. Almost certain. Ooh, there's another Hourglass, actually. And there's not mu that much damage between these two characters. Wally shows up, destroys Lizbear. And this may actually end up being game. God, the healing on Mordekaiser is absolutely insane. No minion wave, though, so they have to wait. Yep. How many Senna stacks? Well, she's dead, but <laughs> if the game goes for another 25 seconds, I'll tell you. Lacosaurus gets the Drake, and he will now run up to join his team. Looks like Nine Lives will be set aside with just breaking the base. They'll head back to the Baron. 9k gold lead. So not looking great. Was very close there, but Alexis managed to survive just long enough. Senna has 73 stacks. Swain has 49 stacks. Thresh has 48 stacks. Anyone else with stacks in this game? <laughs> so the Senna stacks for the record then, that gives her uh, 57 damage, 75 range. Does she yeah, have a hard uh... cap on that, or can she, uh, can she shoot across the map at some point? <laughs> Her range does eventually become absolutely ridiculous. But again, I'm not intimidated by her. Especially because she's about to get caught. Oh, good juke by Pony Ball, but he does get caught by the play, but no one can really chase through. Icy Flip drops again right off the bat. Gregor Soros is going to get taken down into the ultimate at least. But here goes Prowler onto General Wally. They get him, and now it's just up to Rolexis to carry one more fight. In goes Slackosaurus Rex, looking for Gregor Soros Rex. Dino combat is in full effect, but Prowler is just gonna knock down Slackosaurus, but Rolexis is just so big right now. Gregorsaurus gets sniped by the pull of Trufflesaurus. My god, these dino names are out of control. They are actually running away from Pointy Ball and Lux, which is interesting. Maybe just waiting for a minion wave here. Yeah, it's a difficult gap for them to close. They, they are two very good uh, characters at running away. <laughs> Gotta look out for that little angle, though. They do, they do, they do. Oh, that's dangerous, actually. Does Shadow oh. Realm pointy ball, but Relaxus does not have much health here. Yeah, I think he's going to drop in his own realm. He does. Here's Truffle Source, though, just destroys <laughs> Senna. God damn, Swain. Everyone's sleeping on Swain here. Kind of gold. Yeah, that's... yeah, Truffle Source is quietly. Uh gotten himself to a very, very strong scoreline here at 8-3. and three. I mean, everyone's got huge gold at this point. Um, but definitely just being able to one-shot... Well, I guess half-shot. With his best uh, Emperor Palpatine impression. <laughs> I do think that um, Icy Flip needs to change up the way he's playing these fights, because he's going in first and just getting killed. I think it would be more worth it for him to stay next to General Wally and just peel for when Prowler jumps onto him. Alright, so that 9k gold lead has been reduced to a 7k gold lead. Six and a half. It, infinite pings. I've, I'm... Let, let's all take a moment to be slightly concerned for the fact that 9 lives has been pinged very aggressively. 
That that typically implies some sort of frantic frustration. Yeah, perhaps. Good hook onto Liz Bear, and I'm not sure about taking that one over Icy Flip, but they do just annihilate the Lux, and Icy Flip able to get away with his life. Blast Cone to safety. Dawning Shadow comes over, and Relexus, don't step back into that second bomb, my friend. They do get it. Slackosaurus secures. Prowler was down in the bot lane, so not close enough to get in for another critical steal. Yeah, this is a, uh, a fall back and hold the line situation, I think. So Dragon will be coming up sooner rather than later. Agent Token Master, why is Jungle Bot? That's a good question. Yeah, I, I definitely disagree with that uh, that lane assignment there. Nine Lives looks like they're gonna just come out the bot lane, probably just try to shove in this wave, get themselves a second inhibitor. Uh, I think they're gonna set up for they're Dragon. Actually, yeah, Cloud Drake, yeah, absolutely, you're right. Because we got a close opportunity for option 12 has since withered away and now we have nine lives also able to get Dragon Soul here. And this could be that crucial moment where you potentially see Relexus use his ultimate to keep Prowler out of the pit. Well, if Pro I wonder if the ult can be used while Prowler's in mid-flight. Because that would be clutch. I believe so. I believe Nocturne can be hit no, by spells. It actually wow. looks like they they are. I don't know. They just kind of push them. Oh, here goes Slack. They get a ton of damage though. Down onto Icy Flip. He's gone. So is General Wally right away. So again, it's Rolexis. What a huge fight for option 12. Rolexis can he? Oh my God, Rolexis he can indeed. Meanwhile, Trufflesaurus. They're just so. Durable. Rolexis is gonna get pointy ball. Sigtow Eternal drops as well. Gregosaurus all alone. Gregosaurus and Relexus have been our last men standing so many times in these fights. How does Rolexis keep turning these fights around? That looked perfect for option 12 a few seconds into that fight. I'm trying to, uh... Yeah, he's just using his indestructible spell over and over again. <laughs> six, six seconds to just heal yourself for um, 500 hit points. That's how Mordecai's relives forever. And Relexus able to just solo down the Cloud Drake, so four Drakes in a row, I believe that is. Four nine lives. Yeah, these have been some of the most intense team fights I think we have seen in a while in the LCUS. Just constant kerfuffles. <laughs> With uh, Relaxus just dead in the middle most times, but not actually dead because yeah. he can just heal forever. <laughs> Completely undead. All right. So the fact that there's a 10% movement speed bonus here, that is going to be bad news for Prowler um, because he's been trying to chase down Wally, and if Wally's got that little jet, that's true. It's it's got to be a frustrating situation for Wally, though, because he is so strong on his Caitlyn right now, but he never gets to live long enough to do anything. Well, that's the, the gift and curse of being the ADC. <laughs> um, ADC 2020. I keep waiting for, um, for Senna to actually terrify me. It's not really happening. And once again, Prowler, he's down in the mid lane. He will potentially have a flank here. As Relexus taken down to about half health. But oh my goodness, they destroyed Gregosaurus before he can even ult himself. Prowler goes in, but this time Wally survives the dive. They're focusing down Relexus, but that means Wally is the final boss. He's online. He's able to fire away for once. And this should be the game. Pointy Ball will drop as well. Great job by Slagosaurus getting into that back line and... Uh distracting option 12's backline enough. Yeah, absolutely. That's what he's been doing in this game, and it hasn't been flashy, it hasn't been pretty, but he's doing his job, and he's doing it pretty well. Lizard Bear needs to hold the line for 24 seconds. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think there's any way. So, nine lives. They uh, prove a lot of people wrong. Very impressive 2-0. Game 2, extremely competitive. I was uh, running out of oxygen a few times, but... Yeah, surprisingly competitive, in fact. But at the same time, they uh, they shatter another uh, streak. Because Red Team did not win mm. all six games today. Man, can't say enough about what Rolexis did in those fights. 
Yeah. So is uh, Gregosaurus going to give up the Rex title, you think? <laughs> I mean, he is, I believe, the uh, the original one. So, I don't know, it depends. Are we going by, like, Elder Wand rules? Now, let's let's take a note, a, a moment here to appreciate how uh, Nine Lives won this game with no damage dealt by two of their players. Yeah, well, I mean, when you've got Rolexis, who is just so strong, and Wally, as long as he was able to live past, you know, three seconds into the fight, it's, uh, it's like we said, you know, Volibear wasn't doing that much in the fights, but he was doing a lot in the fights. Check out the vision score. Icy Flip just crushing it. Thresh doing a great job overall. Yeah, yeah, definitely. By far the best vision score in the game. Oh. And a good job by Pointy Ball. He actually dealt out a lot of pain in that game, but it just... You just couldn't get that last killing blow onto Rolexis so many times. All right, so we got Trufflesaurus in the chat here. Uh, so we'll head over there for the interview. Truffle, congratulations. Hey, thanks. Uh, it was um, great games, um, hard fought. Uh, there were definitely some times where um, Option 12 showed the teamwork and coordination that they're known for. Very diplomatic of you. <laughs> you, want, you, you, want, you want to try that again? I figured I'd start by greasing the, the wheels. <laughs> so um, one thing I want to ask is Rolexis in that game too. How many times did you feel like a fight was lost and then that guy just somehow didn't die and like yeah. 1v3'd at the end? <laughs> yeah, that was nuts. Um, that, that was something that we were talking about uh, right at the start in Champ Select is that their team um, that we probably have better lungs than them in a, in a gauge team fight um, once their mm -hmm. burst is done. Um, so it was really great for Rolexis to execute on that and really uh, clean up the team fights. Um, he definitely played a great job. To answer your question, uh, yeah, there were, um, I don't know, a dozen team fights <laughs> where it felt it felt terrible or like Wally got sniped or, you know, or we got, um, we started a little bit separate or whatever and, and he just powered through and uh, uh, put the team on his back. Mm-hmm. And there were a number of fights um, in both games where it seemed as though there was kind of a, a back and forth sort of momentum shift, um, which kind of revolved around the team comps. Um, so what were your thoughts going into, especially in this game too, where you're going up against such a strange kind of off lane where it's Senna... And um, Lux, what kind of conversations do you guys have about that sort of lineup? Yeah, so uh, we, d we definitely wanted to play through our bot lane. Um, that was uh, the lane that we thought um, would probably get the most amount of kills one way or the other. Um, so our goal was to, in, at least in this game, was to stack the deck uh, in our favor to get our bot laner ahead. Um, Zillion and Swain are pretty safe, uh, all things considered, and... Mordecai, uh, Mordekaiser into Maokai is also not what I'd expect to be a high action lane um, in respect to the fact that uh, Mordekaiser does the damage, but Maokai can probably survive it. Um, so uh, we were uh, looking to make those outplays in bot lane, and um, our bot laner did end up ahead, so that worked out. So obviously uh, game one was you know not nearly as competitive as game two, but... Uh, between Game 2 here and Game 2 last week against Phoenix, you guys seem very comfortable uh, playing for late game. Uh, very confident in your teamfight prowess to uh, get those critical objectives and in those critical moments. Um, is that something that you guys intentionally do? Are you consciously, uh, you know, saying, well, let's just play for late game? Or is it just coincidence that that's happened? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think, even when you're playing late game champions, it's not like you wouldn't take uh, uh, an early <laughs> kill in lane and, like, snowball it to get a hat or whatever, right? But it just kind of worked out that um, I think our opponents actually stepped up in both of the game twos in the last two weeks. Um, and because of that, uh, we got challenged harder and weren't able to uh, sort of snowball a massive lead like we did in game one. So that and so I wouldn't call that intentional um, because I don't think it was ever intentional. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> um, it's definitely a s state that we're comfortable in, uh, sort of sacrificing a couple of objectives here and there in order to um, not throw the game entirely and then try to make a comeback. 
All right. Yeah. Um, do you have any uh, shout outs you want to uh, throw out here? Well, I do want to shout out the whole team um, because we're definitely coming uh, together really well uh, after week one. You know, a lot of us, is, that was our first showing. I think I'm the only veteran uh, on my team of LCUS. Uh, so it was a lot of our first showings, and I thought we did a uh, great job of coming together and really, like, dialing into our styles. I have another shout out, which is to Gregosaurus, if I can. Uh, first off, to set the record straight, I never accepted his bet, so I, I don't. I don't think he's obligated to, to do anything. You know, if he chooses to, because uh, it was his idea, that, that's fine. But uh, I won't. I won't hold his feet over the coals. But what I do want to say is that after hearing about how I'm the inferior dinosaur, all all break for almost a year or, whatever, or however long the break's been, uh, I, I'm very glad to uh, put that myth to rest. So. <laughs> And, and um oh, go ahead. There, there were questions in chat about favorite dinosaurs oh yeah <laughs> so we're obligated to ask you oh uh, what my favorite dinosaur is yes a uh, tyrannosaurus rex obviously hey <laughs> look at that see i thought it was going to be pterodactyl <laughs> uh, ter pterodactyls pterodactyls up there top three for sure but it starts with a p right p silent so <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly um well, unless Keno says anything. Lastly, for me, and then I'll let you go uh, for my part. It's been uh, about, I believe, 11 days since we had Chaosix on Let's Talk About the League. And they he said that he didn't think you guys would win a single game this split. Uh, anything you want to say in response to that? Yeah, uh, obviously it's become kind of a meme internally on our team. Uh, what I will say is I don't think he'll ever win another game against us this split. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, um, it's certainly becoming a fun pasta meme. I'm seeing it several times now, mostly by Slack in the chat. <laughs> um, and we're looking forward to seeing if you guys are able to uh, take it all the way. So uh, keep fighting the good fight, and maybe we'll talk to you guys again next week. Absolutely. Look forward to having this conversation in finals. Yeah, take care. <laughs> all right. So with that, I have the score screen up here. Northern Storm um, still in first place. But Nine Lives has jumped up. Six points. Option 12, four points. Blitzkrieg back on the board with the one point. We've got uh, three more weeks to go? Two more weeks yeah, to go? Yeah, I believe so. Three more or weeks. Two, two more, more right? Two more weeks to go. It's a, right. it's a round robin, so everybody plays everyone else once. Right. So two more weeks to go. Um, Blitz could easily get up to seven points. So no one is out yet. Um, seeing how the games go. And you know, I mean, with all the 1-1s the one -ones that we had today, not counting nine lives, of course, and even with option 12 uh, hanging in there in two games that they should have lost a while ago, um, very exciting to see how these teams are shaping up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, been a very competitive split all right well with that i think we will close it down for the night thank you everyone for staying up with us thank you to the players for great back and forth games um giving everyone some things to think about some memes to make and we will see you back here same time same channel next week everybody have a good safe week and talk to you then